Hi, this is Nicholas Varney, quantitative strategist at the Oxford Club. Today, I want to talk about what poker players can teach you about successful trading. In my study of successful traders, I've been struck by the number of traders who are also good poker players. David Einhorn, the founder of hedge fund Greenlight Capital, even once finished third in the World Series of Poker. Here's why. Those from traditional investment backgrounds focus on understanding the underlying investment, whether that's a stock, bond, currency, or a commodity. But poker players are far more aware of the risks each trade entails, and by extension, the importance of bet size. Poker players instinctively see parallels between trading and the game of poker. They view trading as a game rather than as an intellectual exercise in financial analysis. Poker players see each trade as a bet that they place and a matter of, quote, playing the odds. If they are dealt a bad hand, they throw their cards in. If they are dealt a good hand, they increase their bet size. Put another way, poker players focus on playing the hands that they are dealt. And as a result, they don't attach their egos to each bet that they place. Let's look at the dangers of being, quote, right. Now, all traders like to be right. It affirms our intelligence and boosts our egos and our brokerage accounts. But many dangers lurk in this approach. Consider the following case. Say you found the investment opportunity of a century. You know it's a sure thing. You have $50,000 to invest. It's such a good idea that you decide to bet the farm. Your bet size is 100%. Now, two things can happen. Number one, your bet works out and you triple your money. You realize that you've unlocked the secrets of the market and you are that you are a trading genius. Or number two, something unexpected happens and you lose all of your money. So here's a quick quiz. Which outcome is worse? I know you're probably thinking, that's a dumb question. Losing money is worse. Now, let me tell you why I think you're wrong. If you lose the first time around, you lose only $50,000. But if you win, here's what could happen. You think you are a trading genius. You borrow money to invest, that is invest on margin. Your friends give you some money to manage and you bet all the money on the next sure thing. Then that particular investment goes belly up. In the end, you lose $150,000. After all, you tripled your money the first time. You lose all of your borrowed money and your friend's money as well. Now this scenario plays out more often than you realize. Let's talk about how to stay in the game and how to become a successful trader. Let me leave you with some rules of thumb for successful trading. Number one, always calculate the maximum you are willing to lose on a trade and size your position accordingly. Number two, set your stop price based on the specific characteristics of the stock. And number three, never risk losing more than 1% of your capital on any single trade. I personally have never risked more than 0.5%, that's one, one half of 1% on any idea for any of the hedge funds that I traded. So what is the poker player's most important secret to successful trading? Successful trading is less about being right all the time and far more about sizing your bets to make sure that you stay in the game long enough to win.